U.S. President Joe Biden suggests there could be a truce in Gaza soon, but Israel and U.S.-designated terrorist Hamas officials indicate no deal is forthcoming. VOA's Rick Pantaleo has more. President Biden said that Israel has agreed to pause its offensive during the upcoming Muslim holy month of Ramadan if a deal is reached to release some of the hostages held by Hamas. I hope by the beginning of the weekend. I mean, the end of the weekend. My, my national security advisor tells me that we're close. We're close. It's not done yet. And my hope is by next Monday, we'll have a ceasefire. On Tuesday, Israel and Hamas have both downplayed the idea that a breakthrough was at hand. Talks to pause the fighting are said to have gained momentum recently and were underway Tuesday. And an official deadline for a deal to be reached is said to be the beginning of Ramadan, which should be about March 10th. Rick Pantaleo, VOA News. At least 576,000 people in the Gaza Strip, one quarter of the population, are one step away from famine, a senior U.N. aid official told the Security Council on Tuesday, warning that widespread famine could be almost inevitable without action. U.S. National Security Spokesperson John Kirby said on Tuesday there won't be U.S. troops on the ground in Ukraine. President Biden has been crystal clear since the beginning of this conflict. There will be no U.S. troops on the ground in a combat role there. Uh, in Ukraine. Kirby's comments came after being asked about what French President Emmanuel Macron said on Monday. France could not rule out sending troops on the ground to Ukraine. France's foreign minister later sought to clarify Macron's comments, saying Paris could send troops to Ukraine for specific needs, but to not fight in the war against Russia. Kirby also denied the U.S. could have non-combat participation in the war. This is VOA News. U.S. President Joe Biden's support for Israel's war against Hamas in Gaza is being put to a test on Tuesday in the state of Michigan, home to a large Arab-American constituency where some Democratic voters have been urged to mark their primary ballots as uncommitted in protest. Biden and Republican former President Donald Trump are expected to easily win their party's primaries in the state on Tuesday, but the vote count for both is being closely watched for signs the candidates face wavering support within their own parties. Three men have been charged with terrorism offensives in a London court. AP correspondent Karen Chamas reports. The men arrested in an investigation into right-wing extremism were charged with preparing to commit a terrorist act, according to authorities. Prosecutors said the men had joined extreme right-wing online chat forums and had distributed information on guns and ammunition. The men had manufactured a semi-automatic gun and identified an Islamic education centre in Leeds as a possible target. The men were held in custody after their appearances by video and ordered to return to the Central Criminal Court on March the 15th. They did not enter pleas. Karen Chamas, London. South Africa's government said on Tuesday, despite efforts at improving protection, rhino poaching was up in 2023. Reuters correspondent David Doyle has more. South Africa recorded 499 rhinos poached in 2023. The government said on Tuesday, 51 more than the previous year. The country is home to nearly half Africa's population of the critically endangered black rhino and the world's largest population of near-threatened white rhinos. But the animals are targeted for their horns, which are used in East Asian countries for making traditional medicines and jewelry. International criminal syndicates are often involved, relying on the help of local poachers and collusion with park rangers. Last year, South Africa's Environment Ministry said it was increasing healthcare training and counselling services for rangers to discourage them from assisting poachers. Reuters correspondent David Doyle. Senegal's National Dialogue Commission will propose a delayed presidential election be held on June 2nd and recommend President Macky Sall remain in office until his successor is sworn in, a commission member said on Tuesday. The West African nation, set to become an oil and gas producer by the end of the year, has been thrown into an unprecedented political crisis after Sall postponed the election initially scheduled for February 25th. The date proposal follows two days of dialogue organized by Saul as a way to ease tensions. His parliaments failed to postpone the February 25th poll by 10 months sparked unrest.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.